Good morning. Uh, I've often reflected on a, a story I, I once read. It's a story of a, of a man who was taken to a prisoner of war camp along with many others. When it came time for the hour of exercise, they all went out in the exercise yard and this little man carried his guitar out and began to sing and dance in the most beautiful voice, strumming his guitar. And the others gathered around and they were filled with this sense of peace. They were taken out of their captivity and oppression and for that moment, they were in another place that was free and beautiful and peaceful. And the guards saw this and they took the man and they they beat him and broke his fingers and said, don't play that guitar again. The next day, he was out there playing his guitar with broken fingers, singing in this angelic voice, drawing people into this other place, this freedom and peace that he knew in his own life. And the guards saw it again. They took him. They destroyed his guitar. They beat him up and said, no more. The next day, he was out singing beautifully and the people were entranced yet again and the guards saw it and they took him, they beat him, they cut his tongue and said, that's it. The next day he was out there swaying and dancing to a rhythm he could hear in his head and the people gathered around and they began to sway and dance and were drawn into this world of his, this world of peace and freedom. And the guards took him away and broke his legs and beat him up and said, that's it, you're finished. And the next day, friends carried him out and he lay there a broken, bloodied heap in, in the midst of the yard. And, and with his head, he, he beat out a time and his arms and, and he heard this song and he was caught in his song and the people heard the song in their own hearts and minds. And again, they were translated, transformed, trans moved into this new place, this, this place of peace. And the guards didn't know what to do. When a person is in deep freedom, when they experience deep freedom, nothing can contain them. No prison cell can hold them. I, I read this week again the story of Father Maximilian Kolbe, a, a Polish Catholic priest, a Franciscan friar, who, who lived and worked out of a Franciscan monastery in Poland. And, and during World War II, he and other priests gathered Jewish people and hid them away from the Nazis. And protected them and, and at times they were arrested and, and, and Father Kolbe could have signed a, a paper that said that claimed his German ancestry and, and gave allegiance to the German authorities but he refused to do that and he and others spoke out against the Nazi regime they spoke out against what was happening and they were arrested again and put into prison and transferred to Auschwitz and there in Auschwitz, Father Kolbe continued to minister to people, to pray and to care and to offer them the peace and this transcendent love and hope that he knew deeply and profoundly. And he offered it around and the guards didn't like him. They beat him and lashed him and he was smuggled into the hospital at times to help people there. He did his work and was unpopular. And there came a point where a prisoner escaped and the deputy commander wanted to make a, an example of this and show everyone what would happen if people escaped or tried to escape. And he chose 10 men to starve to death. And as he named the men, one of them fell to his knees in, in despair and said, my wife, my children, and cried. And Father Colby, Colby went to the deputy commander and he said, I want to take that man's place. He has a wife and family, I don't. Let me swap. Commander didn't care who, he just wanted 10 men to die. So Father Colbe went in and with the other nine, they were starved, deprived of food and water. And he, he ministered and cared for them. And in that space, a witness said, whenever guards went into the cell, Father Colbe was there standing or kneeling calmly in another world, in a presence, or praying himself, or praying for his fellow prisoners. He lived two weeks beyond all the others that he cared for. And when they wanted the cell cleaned, emptied, they decided they'd kill him by lethal injection. And it's said that when they came in, the guards with the lethal injection, he just gently lifted his left arm for them to inject him. And he died with his sense of calm and peace and freedom. There, there was nothing they could do to take away from Father Colbe 
his deep sense of love, of peace, of freedom. He'd given up everything and lost everything, but he gained everything. He gained the world. And that's the paradox of faith and maybe why they made him a saint. So he could shine this light, this profound light into the world through his story and his life. Not many people reach that state of peace and calm and deep love. Many glimpse it and many are working towards it and aiming for it and seeking it and have it at points in their lives. But the likes of Father Kolbe show us that there is another way in the world. A way that is grounded in faith and spirit. A, a way that we can't define and control. A, a way that is, is as, as mysterious and unknowable as it is experiential. We, we can only know it as we let go and, and give our lives over to it. And, and this week around the world in churches, people will read from, from the letter to the Hebrews in the New Testament, stories of faith. That faith is, is trusting in this ineffable thing, one, this transcendent reality that we, we can't define or control but we can experience and love and, and who knows us and loves us and offers us everything. And, and that, that writer shares stories of, of faithful people like Abraham and Sarah who, who believe in this God and in their silence and hear the words and the voice and are drawn into another way and they're told to let everything go and to follow, to journey into this unknown place. A place that they'll be told to. They don't know where or how or what. They're just told to go. And they'll know. They'll find it when they get there. And to trust. And this is, this is a metaphor for us in life. That, that as we let go of the things that control us, that the addictive tendencies, the fear and the uncertainty, the need to be in control, the need to own more and, and keep up with others, to, to adhere to the messages and subliminal and otherwise that we hear in the media and social pages and so forth that we have to have more we have to accumulate more we have to be more we have to control our lives and take control and do it and Jesus says let go and in, in Luke's story of Jesus this week he says little ones don't be afraid for God has given you, in great pleasure, has given you the, this reign that, that is God's, this dream of God, this way of God that Father Colbay embraces in his life and knows. And, 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 and he says, don't, don't build up, store up treasures that rot and decay and mold and, and disappear. Treasures that, that, that don't have substance, that when your life depends on it, can't deliver. Store up for yourself treasure that is real and rich and, if you like, eternal. And, and he speaks of, of, of the love of God, the, of the, the faith and the trust. And he says, if you, if you embrace this reign of God, which is there, this, it's a free gift and is all around you, everything you want and need truly, everything you yearn for deeply, will find its place. You won't have everything you necessarily want or think you want or, or the world tells you you want. You have the deepest things you need, the riches, like Father Colbay and so many others. And he says, follow, but you've got to let go. And this is the paradox. In order to find what we want and to hold deeply what we want and need, we have to let go. I let go of the things that we're addicted to, that we cling to that we're afraid that if we don't have we'll be lesser people or, or we won't we'll be diminished somehow or, or, or we'll starve, there won't be enough um, you know, the money we hoard away for a rainy day in case that we maybe never quite need or, or, or all the possessions that claim us and, and, he, and he says that when you accumulate more and more, whether it's power, wealth, possessions, fame, education, knowledge, you think you control it and own it, but these things own you. They own your heart and your being because that's your treasure. And he says, when you put your treasure 
in other things, in this reign of God, for example, in the love of God, this transcendent, deep peace and love of God, you will find freedom and life in all its fullness. And it won't own you. It will give you freedom. We're invited into this way of faith and life. This way that Father Colbay embraced and, and so of others and lead us into, that invite us into a, an alternate way, an alternate reality, a way of peace and life and joy in God. We receive this gift of God and walk in this way.